Welcome back to my channel, Balance Sheets Matter. Today we're going to be looking at Charter Communication stock and do a stock analysis on Charter Communications. This is a stock I personally own. It is also a stock that's been requested by subscribers, so we're going to cover it. But before we get into the stock analysis, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Balance Sheets Matter. I do stock analysis videos, so if you want to get ideas on potential good stocks to buy or value traps to avoid, make sure to subscribe to my channel because that's what my channel is all about. So getting into the stock analysis, let's first look at some of these high level metrics. I always first like taking a glance at the Guru Focus Value Bound. And right now it is saying that it could be potentially very undervalued or it could be a potential value trap. So we're gonna to need to look at the fundamentals and see which is right because either we're gonna be getting a good deal or we're gonna be trapped. Also, they have a current PE of 14.48 with a great forward PE of 10.53. They do not pay a dividend right now, but they do buy back a lot of shares, as I'll show you in the financials here. You can see basically they've had a pretty good revenue growth trend over time, 15.6% uh, per year. And as we go down here, let's first look at the return on invested capital over the weighted average cost of capital. So before the return on invested capital was quite good, it did drop. And this because it was because in 2017, 2018, they did a very large investment in their CapEx there, which caused it to drop. It is starting to go back up again. And as they kind of depreciate a little bit more of that, we probably should see the return invested on invested capital start to rise again. So just something to keep in mind, you always have to take the these different ratios and things in the context of what's actually happening in the fundamentals of the business, as I'll explain that a little bit later. But we look at the revenue trend. They've had a really good revenue trend. As you can see right around this time right here, as I was saying in the 2017, they had a very large basically CapEx spend, and that also gave them a really big boost in revenue, which is a really good sign. And even with the current like economic headwinds, they still are managing to eke out a little bit of growth. Another thing I really like about Charter Communications is look at their gross margin here. They have been increasing their gross margin over time and they're up to 45%. And if you actually look at the last quarter here, it's getting close to 46%. So this kind of can mean they're gaining a competitive edge in the market, a competitive mode. This is a very good thing in a company. We wanna see this number increasing or staying the same. We don't wanna see it basically decreasing. And then also on the bo uh, next bottom line here, we see on the operating margin, Operating margin has also been increasing over time as well. Before it was in the low teens, as low as 11, 10, 14. Now we're above 20%, pushing 23% a lot of these recent quarters. This is really good. It's showing basically Charter Communications is getting more profitable as they scale, which is a really good sign and potentially means there's still a lot of growth runway forward with them. I'll say the one negative, which also has behind a lot of this growth is their very high interest expense. As you can see, basically, in the last 12 months, they made about $12.4 billion and they almost paid $5 billion in interest expense. So this is one thing that is pretty like common in a lot of these communications types companies, but I don't like to see these really high interest expenses. I give Charter Communications a little pass on it since they're more focusing on growth and buying back shares and the top line gross margin and revenue growth and operating margin do support that but i would like to see them get this interest expense down or at least their debt down in the future as they grow more so we go a little bit further down and we see basically see net income before it was negative now it's flipped to positive they're making lots of money it's good solid net margin and you can see the net mar or the eps is basically just exploding why is it exploding well you look at the shares outstanding and they've been buying back a lot of shares you compare to 2017 going into current year and they've bought back 50% of their shares. That is, that is quite a lot. That's a, these are really aggressive buybacks they're doing. So let's just look at the chart here. So basically 2017, this whole time here, they've been buying back shares. This stock's down a lot. If it's a good value, maybe they overpaid a little bit here, but at these other prices, probably a reasonable, you know, buying back shares. On top of that growth you're getting from the revenue growth, you basically own twice as much of the company if you've held since 2017. So we get into the balance sheet. And we basically see total current assets fairly low at only $3.9 billion, where the total current liabilities are 11. And But this would normally would be a bad current ratio, but you kind of look at however their accounting is going. And this seems to be pretty standard that they've had around this 11 to $12 billion basically in current liabilities and comparison to these lower current assets as well. So this for a company this big, it's not really a concern and I wouldn't really be concerned about this current ratio. You see their total assets are sitting at $145 billion, although there is a lot of intangible assets. 
almost $30 billion of this is basically goodwill. So I think that leaves us about close to 70 billion in other intangible assets. But since they're growing, they have a real competitive moat as the gross margins are increasing. It seems that these intangible assets may actually have some value to them. But overall, that's I don't like to see this much you know, goodwill on the balance sheet. And then we see total liabilities, 131 billion with almost 90, almost $100 billion of long-term debt, which I don't like to see. It's gone a little bit down in the last 12 months, but I do think they probably should try to get this debt down a little bit. Like when things are going well, you can support this debt, you can afford the interest for interest expense. It's not too big of a deal, but when you hit a little rocky patch, this type of debt really starts catching up with you and can really cause problems. But they've been really prioritizing buying back shares instead of this. I'm not objected either way. I think it's kind of given a buying opportunity with uh, you know the current downfall in the stock. It leaves Stoller stockholder equity of 14 billion, although we already know there's $30 billion of goodwill, meaning they actually have negative total equity right now. So not the biggest uh, fan of their balance sheet, but this is pretty standard in a lot of communication companies. You have to take this you know, into your overall investment thing. I've realized that there is some risk in a balance sheet like this that actually isn't that strong when doing your investment. So even though I own the stock, it isn't actually a very big position for me, but you know, a lot of stocks actually aren't very big positions for me. I have over 50 stocks in my portfolio, some get up to a few percent. Try to right now is less than 1%. Maybe if it dips down again, maybe I'll buy some more. But we basically look at their cash flow now. And the one big thing is because they are a very CapEx heavy company, we have to look at the purchase of plant property and equipment. As I was saying before, back in this like 2017 time, they did a really big basically CapEx spend of $34 billion. This did lead to a lot of revenue growth as well. And then we compare it to the cash flow of depreciation. They have been spending a little bit more when I add all of these up together compared to all of the cash flow from depreciation. They have spent a little bit more on uh, the total cumulative amount of purchase of plant property and equipment than they depreciated. But I think those will start to even out over time because I think it's kind of offset by this big $34 billion spend. And you can see now things are really starting to kind of be a little bit more in line. So I really wouldn't look at Charter Communication probably as a company that is, you know, having to do a lot more purchase of plant property and uh, equipment then they're actually depreciating. I think it's probably pretty accurately in line, giving us a pretty accurate reflection of their real earnings they are doing. So, you know, what you're seeing on the earnings is, you know, and cash flow is probably actually what you're getting. So we go down a little bit more and you can see really big buybacks in stock. And, you know, again, this is kind of a pro and a con. A lot of the times, unfortunately, you look at 2021, 2022, they bought back a lot of stock. 2021, 2022, it's at the highs. But also when this happens, you weren't a stockholder here and you get the opportunity to buy down here, it can be your opportunity basically for you because a lot of these, like a lot of the repurchase of stock, it helps that upwards momentum to keep the stock going up. And then when you do come into a little bit the more economic turbulent times, like right now, they cut back on their share buybacks, which causes the stock to drop a lot. It actually can create a buying opportunity. So if you're just not long-term buy and hold forever, no matter what, you buy advantageous points and then sell the advantageous points. A little bit of mis mismanagement of capital can actually be a very good thing for an investor. And you can see free cash flow at the bottom line it has mostly always been positive. It's pretty good, but we can also see basically on the net debt here, they're typically issuing more debt than they're paying. I would like to see this reverse a little bit, maybe just take a little bit of this money, this repurchase of stock, which may be happening in the future and focus at least just on not issuing new debt and at least covering all your debt. Or, you know, maybe they're gonna keep doing that because they see a lot of growth potential in the future. Either way, as I said, balance sheet not so strong. One thing I'd be a little bit cautious of, of Charter, especially as they grow a little bit more, if you do, do start seeing some more cracks in their gross margin, which is the very opposite right now, this is when these problems can catch up as I've reiterated many times. So let's jump into the interactive chart here, try to get a little bit of a relative analysis going, see if it's a good time to buy Charter Communications or if it's a value trap. So I pop up the revenue with estimate, basically from the cumulative from the analysts here. I'm just gonna go on a little bit shorter time span, shorter, shorter, shorter. And uh, let's just do 10 years here. And we can see they are expected, you know, to slowly tick up the revenue trend, kind of in trend with they're going. It's uh, not huge, you know, a couple billion. This is less than around 5% growth. So not a lot of growth there. But if we look at the EPS, because they are spending so much on the share buybacks, 
the EPS is actually quite impressive. So let's get rid of the revenue estimates here. And you basically look at the EPS here. So right now, in basically this current year, they're expected to make just under $32 a share, then it's $41 per share, and then $48 per share. So you're looking kind of two years in the future and they're almost growing. That's, that's almost $20 per share. They're like, that's almost, that's over around, I think around 60% EPS growth in two years. So that's a lot of EPS growth. So, you know, might be a very good value because of that. So let's get rid of that now and open up the price to sales ratio because I think this is a good way to look at companies like this, especially this is even a company with their potential competitive moat, increasing margins. The price to sales ratio could actually justify some increasing in the future. So let's actually get some of this older data here now too. And you can see relatively speaking to the history other than we're kind of at an extreme low now comparable to 2011 and 2012. So from a relative analysis front, this is saying that basically charter communications could be a very good buy right now, which is one of the reasons I actually do personally think it is along with the other fundamentals that I've gone over. So let's go into the stock chart here, look at a few technicals. This is basically my Pitchfork, Pitchfork channel I have. Basically two connections points at the top, connection point at the bottom, and this is the forming trend we're forming. You can see fairly parallel with the moving averages. And we're kind of coming in, we've supported right around and kind of created this price volume profile. And you know, I was buying into like, you know, mid 300s. I don't always get everything at the bottom. And frankly, right now, if it dips down again, I would probably be looking at buying again. We look at basically the daily chart, and this gets a little bit more into this technical analysis, but you kind of see when you're under the, basically all the moving averages, bearish, 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 we popped above it. It's pretty likely we could retest it. And that's personally probably what I would add to my position in charter communications. If not, it keeps going up. That's great. I'm happy either way. There's lots of opportunities, but overall, I think charter communications, good stock, a little bit rocky of a balance sheets, but they're a communications company, but we can forgive that because they're a communications company and everything else on the top line is growing really well, increasing their competitive mode. So I hope the stock analysis gave you some insights. Remember to subscribe to my channel, like the video, and I will see you in the next stock analysis.